That's right. We were, re we were recording uh, Strange Times with Dave Allen, and the engineer that he worked with a lot in those days was a guy called Mark Saunders. And Mark works out of West Side Studios, which is home by Hugh Pagnum in London. And as a tape op, his first job had been um, doing David Bowie. First, he did the Dancing in the Street video and recording with Mick Jagger for Live Aid. And, and then after that, they did the Absolute Beginners session. And they were taking a break one afternoon. Um, and people, they, they started clowning around and they were asking Bowie, how would uh, Bob Dylan sing that line? And so they rolled the tape and uh, he did this, per this great impersonation of Bob Dylan and Lou Reed and uh, a few other people. It was absolutely hilarious. And Mark, had, at the beginning of it, he reached discreetly under the mixing desk and switched on the tape recorder. So he had the whole thing taped, so he brought the cassette into the session and played it to us. And at the time, nobody, hardly anybody had heard it. Um, wouldn't give me a copy of it. I begged him and he just wouldn't give me a copy of it because I'm a huge David Bowie fan. And, uh, but he played it to us. And then and the week after his death, after David Bowie died, suddenly it went viral. It started turning up on uh, YouTube and um, on Facebook and stuff. Um, and she started to get it shared around. So if you do a search for it now, uh, you know, David Bowie impersonations in the studio, you'll find it. Um, and that was the, that was okay. the cassette that Mark played us. <laughs> Absolutely devastated. I mean, you know, we were all gonna die. That's a fact. Nailed on, 100%. But, and yet, you know, and he'd been ill and stuff, and he's getting old, and you, you know, I had talked about it with people. Uh, you know, oh my God, you know, when he had a real scare, when he had a heart attack, and uh, he ended up in a Hamburg hospital on, the, on that tour, on the reality tour, as you say. And, you know, that was a close call. Um, but when it actually happened, I got, I was in Florida, so I couldn't go to any of the vigils and I couldn't go to any of the tributes. I felt really isolated. Um, so, I mean, it, I was I was devastated by it. I mean, I, I was, I picked my guitar up and started playing lots of Bowie songs and then I was weeping. Um, I'm playing songs and, and bursting into tears and stuff. And that, that's, about a week of that, and uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think a death had impacted me that much since my death of my father, actually. And I had a similar thought, um, you know, when my father died, I'm thinking like I'm trying to get my head around living in a world where my father isn't in it, and that was the hardest thing I had to kind of get my head around. And I had exactly the same thoughts when I got the news that David Bowie was dead. It was like I'm living in a world that you know that David Bowie doesn't no longer exists in other than his music and. There'll never be another Bowie record, you know. It's like, it's very, very um, hard. But then, it, you know, the, on the other side of that was, I listened to a lot of Bowie records that I haven't played for a long time. And um, as I say, picked up the guitar and played a lot of Bowie songs, you know. Um, I got my comfort in his music, which is as it should be. I was freaked out by that video. I mean, when I, he was alive when I saw that video. Um, you know, I saw the video pretty much when it was released um, and on, you know, really good equipment because uh, I, have, I have good uh, audiovisual equipment. And um, one of the streaming services that I subscribed to showed it. They had it on, um, on the menus. It was there, Lazarus. So I, 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 I watched, I was freaked out by that, um, you know, immediately. Um, and the poignancy, the poignancy of it only hit home after he died, you know. Um, when I revisited it, and I think, you know, but I remember at the time watching it and noticing all these things about it and how, you know, utterly, utterly strange it was and what a strange record it is, you know, but, you know, typically brilliant, you know. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, most of Ziggy Stardust, um, I was playing um, um, uh, Wild as the Wind. Um, I was playing Time uh, a lot. I was playing um, Be My Wife, uh, Sound and Vision, lots of them. Yeah, you know, when it's funny, at the time I, I would have, you know, at the time I had the same sort of attitude, but with the passing of time, revisiting the album, I got a lot more out of it. Um, for me, I think, I think for me, the, 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 the one I'd l at least listened to was uh, young, young Americans.
uh, that kind of soul period. Because I've, you know, um, I was never a fan of soul. I have very few soul records. I think I've got, you know, I bought some James Brown records, I think, and, you know, Ardeen Taylor, and that's about it. I wasn't really big on soul, so I didn't quite get that, you know. I think the exciting, the exciting time for me was uh, the Berlin period, for sure, and um, everything leading up to it. Because uh, I was at more, I was most, I'm a most impressionable. Because after Station Station came out and Low, um, that was around the time I got my first bass, and I started making music for people. Giant standing tall, crushing all the creatures great and small. I wanna see this giant fall. When will it come? When will it come? What's that rattle round my head? Stroke by lightning, someone said a diamond. Can you hear your cries from down the hall? Souls in isolation. I can hear you breathing through the walls. If I had a mind to now, I could call to you. Or I could simply shout you out. No more would you cry, cry.